Audrey Collins from the National Archives. You're on a day off here. I am. You're yeah. having a good wander around, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> yes, I can do what I like today, which is. So, Audrey, very tell everybody what you get up to down at the National Archives. What, really? Yeah, no, okay. What's your official role at the National Archives? Uh, my, my official role is I'm a family history specialist. I mean, I'm one of the team. There, there are five or six of us at the moment, um, and then we have a senior family history specialist. Okay. And you have a Scottish connection. A Scottish connection? No, I am the Scottish connection. You are Alaba personified. <laughs> well, if you like to say that, I, I've, I've been described by Bruce Dory as a, as a spy in the camp. A spy in the um, camp. I know I sound English, but I've got no English ancestry at all. So the, there's I, no better person tell us about what's going on at the National Archives in Kew that's going to affect somebody in Scotland. Well, you could say that, yeah. So tell us, you know, yeah. I mean, a lot of people think that the National Archives of Scotland is where the Scottish stuff is, and the National Archives of Kew is where the English stuff is. Now, d just correct that. <laughs> well, up to a point that's true. Yeah. But we're the National Archives of the whole of the UK. So where you've got records which relate to the whole of the UK, um, then that will be full of Scottish and Irish stuff as well. Classic example, anything at all to do with the armed services. So all the army service records, the navy service records, air force, marines, all of that, they're all UK-wide records. You can't separate them out. Scottish regiments and Irish regiments have got Englishmen in and vice versa. Uh, and outside the services, um, merchant navy records that we have, those are um, full of, well, English, Welsh, Scottish, Irish and people from pretty much every country in the world. So we have lots of material which has got lots of uh, uh, non-English people in it and plenty of them are Scots. And, and not a bad online catalogue to help you find them. Well that's very nice of you to say yeah. so, yes. Yeah. 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 The point is, I mean there is a lot of stuff, I mean I, I've done research in the National Archives of Scotland and like a regiment for example, Bread Alban's Fencibles, where I found a couple of muster rolls in Edinburgh and I found the rest of the muster rolls down at the National Archives, you know. Yeah, yeah sometimes there is a logic there but we're not quite quite sure what it is. I mean, it's usually to do with where the records were yeah. and then they come to us from um, technically from government departments and agencies uh, and some things have fetched up in government departments and agencies many, many years ago for a variety of reasons uh, and, and now we've got them. So it's, there's not always any obvious logic, you know, there is a reason for it, but it's not very obvious what it is sometimes. I suppose the moral of the story is check the catalogues on both. Oh yes, yeah. yes, because you never know, and it won't take you very long if you don't find something, all you've done is waste a minute or two of your life and it's worth a shot, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, you know. And, I mean, there's a lot going on, the, the National Archives has got a very good website, you know, and there's lots of different catalogues and things. Yes. So if I'm in Scotland, then there, there's other wee catalogues that help me find various things across the country as well, isn't there? You know. Yes, yeah, the, yeah. We, we've got a section, if you go into the section of our website, Website, which is called records and then within that if you select catalogues uh, and online records you'll see uh, there are actually three columns the right hand column um, is lots of resources to help you find things that are not in the National Archives um, in particular the National Register of Archives is what's useful again there is a Scottish equivalent yeah. but if you're looking for Scottish material still look in the National Register of Archives uh, and it's always worth a shot and you can search that by uh, place, by um, personal name if you're looking for the family papers or of, of a person or of a, of a big family. Um, you can search by the name of a business or an organisation and again a lot of these are um, UK wide or, or even beyond. Um, so it's a good place to look. Never hurts to look and you might find some quite surprising things. Oh, absolutely, just adopt the lucky dip mentality and exactly. see if you, if you yeah. strike gold. Yeah. And it's quite challenging times in the country at the moment. You know, there's been a few changes at the damn TNA, yes, hasn't there? You know, yeah. I mean, uh, you're not open on Mondays anymore, is that? That's right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're closed uh, on Mondays, but we have stayed open on Saturdays. Yeah. So that at least people who can't come in during the week, they can still get to us on a Saturday. So um, it, it's, you know, it would be nice to be still open on six days, but at least. Five days is, uh, is better than that. Uh, it's quite long but, hours as well, though. I mean, you're at 7 yes, o'clock at night. And yeah, so we have late night shopping yeah. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's uh, a lot of things that are happening uh, just generally in the world of genealogy at the moment to do with online um, resources. And, oh, and yes. so the, the archives have kind of partnered with a few of the companies here. Um, are there any things that are sort of likely to be forthcoming that, that you can share? Or, or just even just a, a bit about the general strategy about the archives in terms of trying to just get the stuff out in some ways to, to the, the public? Uh, yeah, generally what we do uh, with, with the really, really big popular series like Army Records and the Census is we get a commercial partner to do the 
to do the development work and put up the sites and that's the sort of thing we're continuing to do and one of the things we're always doing is looking to see what records we've got that are particularly suitable for that yeah. and, and that's an ongoing thing and um, we, we put things out to tender and people approach us as well because they're interested in a particular record series and they can buy licenses to, to reproduce things uh, so you know we're, we're very keen on you know, getting stuff out there and if anybody's got any ideas about it then they can uh, they can always approach us uh, yeah. to, to uh, uh, licensed associates um, you can find out information on the website uh, about that it's uh, and I can, I could probably describe it from memory, but it might sound a bit dull, but yeah, sure. it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think uh, over the last few years, obviously, family history, I mean, the, the, the reason this event is happening is because there's been an explosion of interest. Yeah. Now, in terms of the role of the National Archives, have you seen that interest um, sort of realised by family history being a bigger concern? Uh, you know, did it used to be more academic work was done at the PRO when it, before it became National Archives? Or how, how have you seen the, 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 the how's the archive reflected the changes is really what I'm trying to well, get yeah, at? They, they just keep on coming. Um, I mean, we're not a family history organisation, we're an archive, but a very high proportion of our users are, come to us either online or in person because they're tracing their family. Um, and we, we do surveys from time to time. And yes, it's the genealogists who keep on coming. Uh, and there was a time, uh, I suppose, when it was more academics, but as long as I've been doing family history, which is 20-something years, people have been saying, how long do you think this explosion in family history is going to carry on? Yeah. Um, well, you can't put the genie bag in the bottle. I mean, no. You know, that's, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, let, let's, let's forget about the National Archives at the moment. Let's talk about more important things. Your blog. Oh, right, come on, give me, give me the sales pitch on your blog. Okay, <laughs> um, I just started doing this uh, a few months ago. Um, because it's for all these things that I thought were quite interesting, but um, I want to share them with more than my Facebook friends. Yeah. Uh, and I set up a blog, which is really very easy, and it's called The Family Recorder. Yeah. Uh, and I use Blogger software. If you Google it, The Family Recorder, yeah. uh, we'll find it. Or you could go to Chris Payton's excellent blog, and I believe he will link you. To it, it is. It is a truly excellent blog. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that, Audrey. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, but. The, 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 you, you're obviously quite interested in sort of the online and social oh, networking side much, of things. Yes. And you've just come back from Roots Tech, haven't you, as oh, well, yes, over in America? That was fabulous. Yeah, <laughs> well, give me the spiel. What happened in Roots Tech? Was it a, a good thing to visit? And it was what amazing. was it? Tell people what it was, you know. It yeah, was a, a big technology and genealogy conference. It was in Salt Lake City. It was yeah. hosted by Family Search. But unlike uh, genealogy conferences that I've been to before, it was sponsored by uh, technology companies as well. You know, the, you know, really big hitters like. Uh, Microsoft and Dell oh, right, okay. uh, and Hewlett Packard uh, were, uh, were sponsoring and it was a way of bringing together the technology providers with the people who use their stuff. Right. So there were developers, there were software people uh, and it was, it was very, very exciting. The, um, the, the whole, uh, what they call the expo hall was set up with the bloggers, the, they had official bloggers yeah. and they were physically at the centre of it and all the way through the proceedings with all the talks and lectures there were people sitting with mobile devices uh, tweeting and blogging in fact I was sitting in uh, one talk about Irish digitisation I, th I think I plagiarised half of it, I mean, sorry, I mean borrowed from it <laughs> Well, uh, what I was going to say was I was tweeting news as it was announced yeah. uh, and uh, your man here was sitting at home in, in Largs <laughs> retweeting some of the things that I'd said uh, and then even uh, tweeted back a question for me to ask the speaker uh, and then very kindly uh, put the, um, the highlights of this on, on his blog and then said, oh, I expect Audrey will be writing a full report on her blog. Exactly. Do you know, I've never informally commissioned somebody to write an article on the blog before <laughs> by peer pressure. It's, it's quite exciting. Well, it seemed to work, so I had to do it. And what was very interesting, when I look at the stats on my blog, yeah. um, the, the, the report, fairly brief report I did about the Irish digitisation um, is almost, I think it's the third highest blog post uh, in terms of hits. Yeah. Uh, but that, but that's, the, that's the world today though, isn't it? I mean, people want news now, yes. and they, they, want, they don't want it now, they want it yesterday. And they want Irish news. As well. And they want Irish news. My God, they want Irish news, yeah. yeah. You know, and at least there's a lot of Irish news that is yes, going to satisfy nice. them for a bit. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. For, for a change, yes. Ab it's good news at last, this is great. Great stuff. Listen, Audrey, thanks very much. I know you're on a day off, so thank you for spending a couple of minutes uh, just yeah, bringing us up to date. You know, thank you. No problem, we'll do it again next year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Today>. <laughs>